stand up on your feet, oh. Church, oh, 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 oh. Let's give God some crazy praise up in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to start off by apologizing. I was a little late, but sometimes things are got to get done in order to do the other thing. Amen? Amen. So I just thank and praise God for you. I see many, many people that are my friends and I'm just so very grateful for you all being here. Amen, amen. And again, you know, I just thank and praise the Lord for you for being able to be around the saints of God. Amen. You may not believe it, but you know what? You're around the saints of God. You feel a different spirit. I do. I'm on somebody. Maybe you don't feel it, but I do. I feel a different spirit when I'm around God's people. Amen. amen, 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 amen. And so uh, we're just going to go ahead and... and, and uh, begin our worship, that we may praise God and lift him up and do all those things that we're supposed to do. Amen. 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 So uh, we're just going to start off with prayer. Amen. 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 Dear God, Heavenly Father, we come before you today. And God, we don't just come with no purpose, but we come with a purpose. And our purpose, Lord God, is to just lift you up and give you the glory. Oh, God, not to receive, but we come to give today. We come to just give you thanks and praise and honor. And we can just glorify you in your word. And, Father, we just thank you that you brought us to the house with a mind and a spirit to honor you and to praise you. And, Father, we thank you for your many people that came. Lord, we thank you that you've given us the strength, the health, the ability to come to the house of God. Lord, we just give you praise for all that you've done, all you continue to do. God, we could never say enough because your love is so great and so intense so we can never give you enough praise. But God, today we're going to do our very best. How many of you are going to do your best? How many of you are going to do your best? How many of you are going to do your best? So, Father, as we come before you, God, we turn it over to your Holy Spirit that it might have power, that it might have authority. And each and every one in here, we yield, oh God, to the Holy Spirit. That it may lead us and guide us into all truths, even as you said. And Father, this is our prayer in the name of Jesus. And once again, we turn it over to you with love, even as we receive your love. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So at this time, I'm going to call up uh, Pastor Bolton. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and get off into a little other things, a little worship, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Amen? Amen? Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's give the Lord a hand. If you are here, if you're able to walk, talk, see, whatever, even if some things may not be functioning quite as well as we think they should, we still need to give God some praise. Amen? Give the Lord some praise. Oh, is my friend and colleague, if you want to call it, say, we can do better than that. Come on, now. We can do better than that. I'm talking about Pastor Kevin. He's always saying we can do better than that, and we can do better. Let's give God some praise and honor and glory for us being here today. Amen? Oh, we've had a wonderful time all weekend long. And you've heard me say, the one that was here have heard me say before, that we, that we have, uh, than just honoring God. Amen? Yes, amen, amen? We've been doing some things just, just, just phenomenal over here. Yes, We've been having some phenomenal speakers. And I'm saying this to, to kind of prick your mind or to vex your spirit, if you will. Yes, if, you, yes. if you wasn't here, you missed it. <laughs> if you wasn't here, you missed it. But, you know, just like God sent man and man act up, God had a remedy, right? Yes. Amen. God had a remedy. The remedy was Jesus Christ, right? And we got a remedy. It's a CD or a DVD. Oh my God. Ah, and you can't get it. We got now, wait a minute. Oh, the bishop's the only one uh, uh, happy about that because no, everybody think of what it is. Yeah, you got to give, give a nickel or two. 
for the CD. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all sleepy or what? Y'all tired? Y'all want something to eat? We got some food out there, somebody, but it's not time to eat yet. Amen. We only get started. It's, it's indeed an honor and a privilege to be here. First, I want to honor God the Father and Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who keeps us. I want to honor those three in one person, which is what we're talking about this weekend, unity among the brethren. And the brethren mean the lady rings too. I just made up me a word. <laughs> I honor my bishop and his, and his wife, the first lady. I honor all of the ministers. I honor all of the uh, prophets, all the evangelists, all the pastors, all the teachers, all the children, everybody here, I honor you. Amen? Amen. So we're going to get started. We got a special treat this afternoon. We want you to sit back and relax. Kick your shoes off if you need to. If they get tight sometimes. Yesterday I had on a pair of uh, tennis shoes and they're a little bit tight. And I'm telling somebody I got the wrong size on the inside. So, <laughs> so if your shoes too tight, just take them off. We don't mind. Amen? Amen. You want to shout, shout. Dance, sing, cry. Do whatever you want to do as long as it's led by the Holy Spirit and His righteousness. Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. All right, we, we don't, we, we're not going to prolong the time. It's been a long weekend. The bishop and I were talking about being tired, but we're still going. Amen. We're by the grace of God and by his power. Amen. Yeah. So we hope you uh, enjoy us this afternoon. We're going to enjoy it. I'm waiting for the word. I've been living for the weekend. Amen. I want to ask the voice of Christ to come up. We got a special thing for the bishop this afternoon. Oh, my God. Oh. I want to ask the voice of Christ if they will come up right now. All right, brother. Come on around here. Bishop, if you don't mind, would you come up, sir? Just stand right here. You can stay just like that or turn around. It don't matter. Yeah, turn around. I want you to turn around. Now, I want to ask you a question. I want you to be real serious with me. What is that that you called us last night? Oh, <laughs> about that. And I told him last night I was going to get him. I was telling him that last night. I said, I'm going to get you. I'll get you. And I thought about it. I said, I'm going to ask the boys to come up. And I'm going to ask him what it is that he, and he pointed, put it all on me. He said, David Bowles, the only one need the oxygen tank. So, and I was trying to lead Brother Jimmy out, but he said, no, I'm a part of this group. I'm getting in there. Because <laughs> he's, he's, he's the youngest one of, of this group. But we're just happy to be here. We're going to do some, we're going to try and do some song, do some song that you will like. Amen. Amen. Hopefully that you like it. We like it, so we hope you like it. Amen. Yeah, those those lights are working. You don't know if that means something that applies right now. So we're gonna, the first song that we're going to do, we're going to try and look at look at Genesis, how God, uh, what God did in Genesis the first chapter. In Genesis the first chapter, God, or the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord moved up on the deep. Amen. And, and it also said that God moved, or God spoke in their walls. He said, let there be, and it was. Whatever it was, it was. Amen. He said, let there be man, let there be woman, let there be cow, chicken, whatever. I'm paraphrasing, but God spoke it, and that's how it was. Amen. Amen. And guess who I get that from? I got this from the bishop. Bishop pointed that out what, three, three years ago. He said, God, he always talking about God spoke. God spoke. And guess what, y'all? He told me, he said, go and subdue, have dominion over the earth. We have power and authority to speak. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have power and authority to have whatever it is that we say to move. Amen. Yeah. So we want, you to, we want you to sit back, relax. Don't be all pious. Don't be tight. Relax and enjoy as we sing this. 
searching for something. And you searched a long time. But at the end, you found it. I don't know about you, but I've been searching for a long time. And when I did find it,
so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm going to mimic uh, Pastor Kevin T. Story. Y'all can do better than that. Come on, somebody. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's give a, let's give a hand for that wonderful music. Not just any music, but to the praise of God, to the praise of God, to the praise of God. We're just uh, glad that you are here and everything. And uh, so we, we have a program, but let me tell you, we're not going to necessarily follow that, but rather the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And hope Pastor Gary will, well, he's going to tolerate it, the Holy Spirit will. It'll work. It'll work. I'll just put it off that way, okay? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm just trying to follow order here. But once again, we're not going to be in order with man, but rather with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And so as we look down here, I see worship songs. Worship songs. Worship songs. L-A-O-M. And I, I just want you to know that we appreciate the singing that you all did. Beautiful, beautiful Amen. music. Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. Praise the Lord. I tell you, you know, when, when we were out there in the world, boy, we were kicking it. James Brown and all them folks, boy, we go crazy. When they make a little noise, we would go crazy. How much more for Jesus? How much more for the praise of the Lord? How much more for the worship of the Lord? Amen? We should be twice as strong. Amen? And so we're just going to have the Loving Arms Outreach Choir come and sing. Amen. Amen. At this time, uh, Pastor Strader is over that. Great man of God. He works very, very hard. And so, as they come in, let's give him a hand, please. Let's give him a hand. Actually, we're not giving it to them person, but rather the fact that God has sent them to us. So, actually, we're giving God a hand praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
He want to talk about me, Pastor Bowden. I'm going to say it anyway. Y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. Let's give God some praise this afternoon. If you're here to praise him, come on, let's do it. Magnify.
place that's hotter than this. So I just want to praise him while I got a chain. See, can I call this kind of cool as a matter of fact? So y'all, it's all right to just let go and let God have his way.
Let it ride. How could y'all be sitting down with that? Everyone stand on your feet and just give us an oh. Oh. We, we, we here at Loving Arms, we are very glad to have you. And we have several churches here. And so we're just going to do a welcome and response now. And so I would just like to say, first of all, on behalf of our bishop, we would like to welcome you and we'd like to say, we want you to just praise God and feel comfortable here. Amen. We don't want you to be tight. But we want you to be loose in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we be too tight. We, we just want you to loosen up in the Holy Spirit. And if the Lord give you to dance, no, you can dance in this church. Amen. If the Lord give you to shout, you can shout. Oh if you want to clap your hands, you're free here. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we need to be free in the Lord. Yes. And do those things that he told us to do to glorify him and to praise him. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so I just want everybody to know that you are welcome to the Loving Arms Outreach Ministry. Yes. On behalf of Pastor Gary Stern and his beautiful wife, and we members also welcome you as well. See, we're going to have to start the reaching out and extending our arms one to another. And one of the things we talked about, Bishop and I, we talk about it very often, and also Pastor LeBron Funches, we talked about before, we have to reach out, we have to touch. You know, let me just say this for a minute. I know it ain't part of what I'm supposed to be saying, but the Holy Spirit telling me to say it. We are too drawn back for the wrong reason. My God, my God. See, one of the tricks the devil used when I'm a Lutheran, I'm a Church of God in Christ, so I can't, oh, I'm, a, I'm not going to talk to them Baptist folks. I'm not going to, we are all in the body. We're all in the body. And that person that have that weakness, maybe I do need to talk to them. Maybe I can share something that will change them and go more to the things in the spirit of the Lord. Amen? So we cannot hold back. That's what the devil want. Oh, they have church on Saturday. The Bible said the Sabbath. He didn't say which, which day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Sabbath. Set aside a Sabbath. But what I'm saying, I, I'm going to cut it off. I don't want to prolong it. But just remember, we just need to get more united. We just need to have more association with each other. That's the trick of the enemy. That's right. We are a family. And a family need to get tighter and closer together. Amen? Amen. And so once again, Love and Arm Outreach Ministry does welcome you. And on behalf of the pastor and his wife and family of the church here, we would just like to say welcome. And we would like to have a response from the churches. Somebody have a response? Somebody want to respond? Pastor. It's an honor to be here amongst a lot of my friends here this afternoon. Give honor to this house, Bishop and his lovely wife. And to my father in the spirit, Dr. Gary and Patricia Stern, my Amen. father and mother in the spirit. Amen. Amen. It's an honor to be here, New Life Resurrection Ministry. Um, know that we love fellowshipping with you all. And um, yes, we just yes. want you all to know that you're more than welcome to come fellowship with us as well. And one thing you said, um, Pastor, is that we need to bring unity back in the body of Christ. Uh, it's must needed in this last hour. So I'm happy to be here among my brothers and my sisters. And I love you all. God bless you. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. One thing Pastor Joshua preached on the first night was about unity. Being one, being one. See, if we be one, then we have more strength. And see, the Bible talk about how that one can put a thousand to flight, and two can do what? Put ten thousand. So he's not talking about people, but sometimes the spirits will control us and cause us to do those different things. So if we come together and pray, and I told the people this before, uh, just a minute, Bishop. I told people this before. What happened in the Bible, I think, they talk about how that the 
people in those days, the followers of Jesus and those that really loved the Lord, said they turned the world upside down. See, what we need to know that as long as we're not praying and doing what we're supposed to do, the world is actually upside down right now. But see, what we can do, we can turn it upside down according to the world, which will be right side up for the people of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen? And so, I, I still say that we can turn the world upside down if we get united. I've heard this expression before. Ain't no devil in hell that could do nothing against us. Amen? Amen. Would there be another response? Another response? Another response? I just thank the Lord for being here on this afternoon. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise Bishop Hodge on this afternoon, everyone here, and I love you. Love you. And I've just been having a good time in Jesus. Amen. I just, I would just pray, and I said, Lord, I really want to be here every night. But Friday night, I could not be here. But you know what? God is a good God because we had open house by the grandchildren. Praise the Lord. But God had a plan for me to be there as I was sitting out on the church ground. But anyway, God, two men came and wanted to be saved. God knew this perfect. So I thank God for it. But I've just been really enjoying Jesus. All the word that we've gone forth. And we thank you, we thank you for inviting us to come. Praise God. Amen. 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 Other response? Other response? Okay. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. We are in the house of the Lord. And I just thank you, praise God, for being here all this evening. For truly, we felt welcome when we walk into the door. Amen. Amen. And it's good to fellowship amongst the saints of God. One Lord, one Savior, and one baptism. Hallelujah. And when the Holy Ghost is in the house, hallelujah, the Spirit can move. And I just thank you, praise God, for the invite. And on, and on the behalf of my pastors, Gary and Patricia Stern, we're just glad to be here in the house to fellowship with our family. Loving Arms Ministry, Bishop Hargett, we're so glad to be with you. And God knew the right time. Amen. You all be blessed and thank you again. Amen. Would there be another response? Would there be another response? I just want to say something very quickly. It wasn't on my mind, but the Holy Spirit just gave it to me. And the reason I know it's the Holy Spirit because the devil wouldn't tell me this. But I'm going to put something on your mind to think about. In your family, in your family, See, my name is Jerry. I had a brother named Jesse, father named Jesse, mother named Irma. Amen? Now, I'm going back to the church with the different names. We all had different names, but what were we? Family. Family. We might have different names that we're calling our churches, but we still need to be family. My brother, my father, my mother, they treated me good. We need to treat each other good. When I had a problem, they would respond. Yeah. That's how we need to be in the body of Christ. Yeah. Support, bring up, yeah. undergird each other. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to do that, saints. We got to do it. We, we can't let be pushed back. And, and just We just have to close out those voices that are not speaking according to the Bible. Amen? Amen. 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 Would there be any other response? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I bring you greetings Hallelujah. from Jabez's Choice Church and Ministries. And uh, Bishop Hargett is my overseer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor uh, Hallelujah. Elder Jerry is my husband. Amen. But I want you to know as a prophetess and, and I... You know, a lot of times I want to open my mouth. Sometimes I say, well, you know, maybe at the end if they, they open a space. But the prophet told me, was it last night or the night before? Amen. He said, you got to open your mouth. Amen. And I want you to know that there were, it, it wasn't necessarily uh, the, maybe the style, the quartet or whatever it was, but the words of the songs, I had to stand up. Amen. Amen. I had to wave my hands. I said, well, Lord, yes. and I felt grieved. The Lord was, the Holy Spirit grieved because we didn't, we weren't rejoicing yes. as a body. And as a whole, we were not rejoicing yes. together. Yes. And the scripture tells us when one weeps, we ought to weep with it. Yes. When one rejoices, 
we all rejoice. And so the, the singers were rejoicing. God wanted us to rejoice together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I said, well, Lord, maybe they maybe they wonder, well, you know, what am I doing over here in the corner, waving my hand, amen, agreeing with the song. But when you've been healed of Habamoka, Shandia Sata, stage two colon cancer four years ago, amen, I have to shout, I have to leap, I have to jump, I have to Thank you, sweetheart. That's my beautiful wife. For those of you that don't know, I got married the 9th of June, and uh, I was nearly three years alone. But you know, I wasn't alone. The Lord was with me. But see, we also need human. We also need certain uh, human associations, certain human things that need to go on. Amen? And sometimes when you lose someone, a loved one, you it's, it gets pretty rough. It gets pretty rough. And so the Lord just let me know it's time. This is the lady here. And so I just thank and praise God for my beautiful wife. And I just, I just, she's a beautiful woman. She's very nice. She's very good, you know. And I just thank God for her. And so with that, what we're going to do, we're going to go into a, uh, uh, was that the end of the responses? Responses? Any more responses? Oh, I'm sorry. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I give honor to God to the head of my life, to my bishop, to Bishop Hodges, to uh, um, Pastor Fonzie, and all the other elders in the house, and uh, preachers, teachers, missionaries, evangelists, and prophets and teachers, whoever. Of the lay members, I give honor. Truly, indeed, our Lord and Savior is worthy. I thank God for this man's comforts. Amen. Amen. I tell you, I'm just looking around and I tell you, God is doing a great, a mighty work in this place. I thank God for what God is doing for our Bishop Hodges. Amen. 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 And I just want to say today, God got some sweet people. Yes, yes. When you look at Jesus, yes. God made everything beautiful. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Sometimes we act up, yes, but it has nothing to do with God. Yes, God, he's beautiful, yes. wonderful, yes. made his children. And we are God's children. We're not here to fight, argue, and bigger against one another, Amen. but to love one another Amen. and treat each other with dignity and respect as God so has ordained. Amen. 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 And once we get the word of the Lord in our hearts, in our mind, we ought to carry it out just exactly how he written the word. Amen. 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 We can't add to it. We can't take from. Amen. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God don't come put no heavy burden on us and yoke us up. Huh? We are so free in Jesus. Because he said, whom the Son of Man said, free is free indeed. But I just thank God. I thank God for allowing me this space to let each and every one of us and our Bishop Hodges know that Jesus got us. He got you, mighty man of God. Amen. And he got you preachers and teachers and, and, and musicians and who have thank him. Let's just thank him for who he is. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Any more responses? Any more responses? Okay, we just thank and praise God. I think now we're going to go into the video, if I'm not mistaken. And so we want you to just look at it, take in what you see, put it in your heart, and begin to try to live some of it. Amen? Amen. Want to do the video? Every 
crime against humanity. Every genocide, every unspeakable act of oppression and tyranny, every act of terrorism, every starving nation ignored, every drop of martyred blood, every orphan and widow abandoned, every stranger in need passed by, every deviant and perverse lifestyle, every marriage torn asunder, every word uttered in hate, every injustice, every theft, every grudge, every bitterness, every lust, every fear, every lie, every doubt, every one. Oh, the weight of the cross. Oh, the strength of the one who bears it. Not for him, but for us. Amen? Amen. And that's just like a gift. Anytime somebody want to give you a gift, you're going to push it back. God gave us a gift, his son. We need to just reach out and take that gift. Hug that gift. Keep that gift. Amen? Amen. So right now we're going to go ahead and get to the word. How many of you enjoyed the service so far? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I know this great man of God, and I think you're going to, well, I know you're going to enjoy him. Amen. And I'm sure that he's going to impart some wisdom to you. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to be listening very closely. I'm going to have a pencil and paper. Because I'm going to make notes, because any time Pastor Gary Stern speak, he speak with the authority of the Holy Spirit. He speak knowledge. He speak truth. He speak from wisdom. Not his wisdom, but the wisdom of the Lord. Amen? Amen? And so at this point in time, so not to delay the time or anything, I would like to say, welcome, Pastor Gary. Welcome. Amen? Amen? Amen. And also, Pastor Patricia, we welcome you also. Amen. And we just thank and praise God for you. Amen. And once again, like I said, this couple... Any time, any time that they come and do something, you're going to be blessed. All you have to do if you want to be blessed is just pay a little attention. Make a few notes. And give the God some clap every now and then. little praise. Amen? Amen? So at this point in time, how about a round of applause for the man of God? Amen? Amen? Amen. Know that those praises are going to the Father. Because the Father is the one who made him who he is. Amen. So at this point in time, I would just say, Pastor Gary, Pastor Patricia, Patricia, we welcome you. Excuse me, I'm just trying to talk too fast. We welcome you and feel comfortable here. And God bless you even as you minister. I'm sure we shall be blessed from your words. Thank you. To God be the glory. Amen. I'm giving honor to God today and always to the angel of this house, Bishop Michael L. Hargett, to the elect First Lady, Cheryl. We just are so excited about being here to all the ministers, to the Presbyterian, to the Ecclesia. We just thank you for coming and thank you for being here and giving us an opportunity. I want to say first and, and foremost, I thank God for my 
lovely wife who is truly bone of my amen, bone, amen. flesh amen. of my flesh. And I thank God for her and for all the members that would follow me here today. Amen. We amen. just want to, to give you what God has given us. I, I noticed your theme and we were trying to make it here. I wanted to be here yesterday for the breakfast, but everybody, everybody, you try to touch base there where, uh, Bishop, I know you know what we're talking about, but I'm here today and I've been excited about this. I've been counting down the days, knowing all along that I was going to be here. Amen. So we want to just let God have his way today. If you'll just bow your heads with me briefly. Father, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just come praying that you would allow your spirit to have full course, Lord. That you would let something be said that would touch hearts, minds, and spirit today. Lord, let souls be filled to the brim, Lord. And Father, we thank you for allowing us to be the vessel through which this transformation may take place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would open your Bibles with me. You know, things just happened to fall out of your car when you got out of you happen to look around the house and it was still laying on the table where you left it last Sunday. And you brought it with you to the Old Testament, to the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, the 23rd verse. The 23rd chapter, excuse me. We're going to be reading the 9th and the 10th verse. 2 Samuel, 23rd chapter, the 9th and the 10th verse. When you have it, you can say amen. amen. And it says... And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahoite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied, defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand cleaved unto his sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to the spoils. I just want to speak to you very briefly because God doesn't want to do a, a whole lot of things. He just wants to get his word out. Amen. And he can do that expediently. I want to speak to you about God's weapon in the hands of God's man. God's weapon in the hands of God's man. You may be seated. And I was thinking on it, uh, Bishop, I know that your your theme was about men and you were using Second Chronicles that my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. And I've heard a lot of that the last couple of months. I've heard a lot of that within the church because truly we know that people like us have to humble themselves. But I got to thinking about the men's part of it and how God was calling men to be men in this society today of baby's dad, mm. significant others. Mm. You know, it, 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 there's nothing for our young men to see and to vision after real men. My God, my God. And you spoke of in the flyer the sons of David. Mm. Yes, and I thought yes. about it. It said David was surrounded with mighty men. Yes, yes, yes. These men were examples. They were they were set forth in the Bible as example. And of those many mighty, he had three uh -huh. that were named by name. One of those was Eleazar. Uh -huh. Because he stood by David. And, and I often think about David in the stories where being a pastor, you have people that serve you, Bishop. Uh -huh. that, that, that work with you and men that stand by you in yes, spite yes. of what you're going through. And it said that they were in the midst of the battle and David just said off the top of his head, I, I wish I had a drink uh -huh. from the spring. Yeah. And it said his men heard him, his armor bearers heard him, and they, they fought their way through the battle yeah. my God, my God. to the spring and brought him back a drink of water. Yeah. And it said when they, they presented it to him, he just wept. Uh -huh. he, he wouldn't even drink up, because he knew what an expense they paid. Yeah. To get it. Oh my God, my and so we're speaking God. today about the men of God. Yes, 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 yes. With the weapon yes. of God. Uh -huh. We know the weapon of God is the word. Yes, 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 huh? yes. It said above all, taking up the sword of the spirit. Uh -huh. Which is the word of God. And so we see that this is an expiring story. I don't know if you had time to read it at any time. Or you can go back and read it when you need to. But 
the children of Israel were up against the Philistines again. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And it seems like no matter what happened, no matter where they went, they were always running into the Philistines about something. Yeah, yeah. And there was a problem. Uh -huh. But for some reason, yeah. the other men had gone away. Uh -huh. I don't know if they ran away because, you know, Elder, when things get thick, people thin out. Yeah. Yeah. When things get thick, folks, they got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even Jesus was standing there and the disciples told him, I'll be with you forever. He told them before the cock crows three times. You, you're going to deny me. Now, I always know, Bishop, I tell you, when somebody tells me, I'm going to be with you, I ain't going to never leave him. He got one foot out the door already. And you, you can scratch him off. But I'm talking about the men of God that carry the weapons of God into the battle. And so there was only David and Eliezer. And they said they alone would stand the whole Philistine army. So this is an amazing story because I'm looking at it and sometimes I'm trying to figure out here the Bible is talking about what a man is. Uh -huh. uh, a man has the ability to stand yeah. in spite of odds. A man has the ability to endure hardship. A man Come on, Pastor. puts his life on the line for the things yeah. that he believes. My God, my God, my God. But Eleazar was an unusual hero. Mm -hmm. He was someone that stood by the side of his king against insurmountable odds. And, and I know any any minister here, any, any pastor, any any minister that is within ministry needs someone that will stand by their side, that will be with them in the midst. So I know that God is always going to be there, but I think like, like Elder Stewart said, we are made sometimes to just have a little human companionship. You know, somebody that's got some skin on that you can talk to. That can comfort you when you're in the downs. And you know, it's like you said, we're all human. We get down. Yes, sir. A lot of pastors are in depression these days. Oh, it shouldn't be. We're men of God. But when we go through yes, 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 the midst of the storm, yes. we're still flesh and blood. So Eliezer was one of the mighty men. I like that title because you don't hear that a lot. Mighty men. You know, he's just a man. That's what they He's just a man. He flesh and blood. He, he put his lip pants on one leg at a time. But these were mighty men. They didn't run. They didn't hide. And when it was a job to do, they did it. Today, we're in a society where men take the back seat. You know, if I can get out of it, I ain't going to do it. You know, they started it with television. You know, they started with, with television. And they had the father was demeaned. You know, the children laughed at him and the mother talked about him. And all he did was sit in the chair and watch TV and anything he could get out of. Right, all right. You get out of. You, you know the symbolism is Al Bundy. Huh? It's Homer Simpson. Daddy was stupid. He was ignorant. He didn't know nothing. But men of valor were the leaders. Men of valor were the ones that stepped up in the midst of trouble. Oh, and handle the situation. I and I it stepped up because they had something that all men need. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. They had the weapon of God. Yes, and they had God on their side. Yes. Who do you think would stand in the midst of an army? Yes. Uh -huh. Two to two. Uh -huh. Huh? There were thousands of men there that said they stood back uh -huh. to back yes. and slew. Uh -huh. But I want to tell you about Eliezer today. Uh -huh. Because it's recorded that he stood and slew them in spite of the situation. He's a modern day hero. He has a lesson to share with us. They were in the valley that was called Pasadim. And they were against the Philistines once again. This valley was a place where they had faced them many times. Like I said, it seemed like every time they beat him, they would come back. But I, I'm not surprised because the scripture says the devil mm. will leave you for a season. Come on now, speak. For a season. Yeah. But he's coming back. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know how that is. If he can't get in the front, he'll go to the back. If he can't get in the back, he'll climb up on the roof. If he can't get in the roof, he'll come down the chimney. He'll be Santa Claus. But he's going to come back. And so he finds us unprepared because we're thinking he's coming at us one way. Yes. He's coming another. Yes. I had to tell the Bible class the other night, Dr. Bolton, the armor of God, we were talking about it. Uh -huh. I said, all oh, the armor of God 
doesn't have a back on it. It's all offensive and one defense. It's got a press plate. It's got leggings in the front, but in the back ain't nothing. So if you turn your back, you're already dead. So we want to talk about the weapons that God has given us. I said the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even in the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent. But we lose something because we don't realize even today, you know, we, we, we don't deal with swords so much. You know what they say, Pastor? They say, we don't, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. You, you, you come out here with a sword today, you, you can forget that. You got to get too close. But we see here that they were talking about a two-edged sword. And I was telling my, my Bible class that we need to learn these things because they relate to the scripture. Uh -huh. There are many two-edged swords. One of the biggest was a claymore, yeah. which the Irish used in their defeat, in the, their defeat of the British. Uh -huh. And the claymore was a sword about six foot tall. Mm -hmm. And it had a double edge on it. Yeah. You couldn't swing it with one hand. You had to use both hands. Yeah. Yeah. And you had to be careful because it was sharp on both sides. I could swing it out, and when I bring it back, I cut myself. Come on now. So you had to know how to use it. It wasn't something you could just pick up. You know, oftentimes we as fathers and we have sons, you know, the son will see you standing in the mirror shaving. But he don't realize you have to know a little something about shaving. And he'll get that razor and cut itself quickly. And so if we're going to use the weapons that God has given us, we need to know how to use them. Come on, they, they said, not a novice. That's what the scripture said. You, you got to know how to use the weapons of God. You have to realize that the weapons that God give us are sufficient. Eleazar's weapon was sufficient. Now, I believe it was one of the apostles that had a problem. And he said, I besought God three times. And God told him, my grace is sufficient. I don't know if Eliezer named that sword grace, but it was sufficient. He was able to handle anything that he has to face. And so as men of God, we have to realize that God is sufficient. Whatever you face, he is there. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. And when your mother and your father put you down, I'll take you up. See, they were, they were in the valley of Persephone again. And it was a valley that was well known. It was called the Valley of Blood. That's what the name is, the Valley of Blood. So there were many times they were there. Sometimes we get in the Valley of Blood. It doesn't look like nobody's with us. We're surrounded. And even when we think about it, in the Old Testament, it talks about the prophet. Uh -huh. and the king uh -huh. was besieging Israel. Uh -huh. He wanted to take them. Yeah. Yeah. And every time he made an effort, he was defeated. Uh -huh. Every time he set a plan, his plan was done. Uh -huh. And he called all his generals together. I'm talking about the man of God with the weapons of God. Yeah. Yeah. And he told his generals, he said, one of y'all is a spy. Yeah. Yeah. One of y'all is a spy. Every time I put something on the paper, uh -huh. they know what it is. Uh -huh. And one of his generals had to plead for his life. He said, Lord, please, no, no, it ain't us. Uh -huh. There's a prophet over in Israel. Uh -huh. And he can see in your bedroom, man. And so he called his army together. He said, I want you to go there and get me that prophet. So bring him here. And the prophet was up in the mountain with his servant. And the servant happened to be out getting some things. And he looked up and he saw the hills were full of armies. And then he talks about it in the plan that I wrote today. It said that the army was in array. You know what it means when they're in red? I mean, they got their full regalia. They got shields. They got sword. They got armor. They got catapults. They got horses and chariots. They were in full array. See? But the servant was not the man of God. Uh, he went out and he looked and a little fear went through him. So something yellow ran down his back. He went running back. 
back in the house and he told the prophet, he said, Master, we're surrounded. We got to get out of here. See, Pastor Bishop, you, you do know that when things get tough, people tell you, we got to get out of here, Bishop. This ain't working, Bishop. We, 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 we got to go. But the man of God, see, he didn't even so much as look at him. And he looked up to God and said, Lord, Open his eyes. Oh, come on, Pastor. How many times have somebody come to you and you said, Lord, open their eyes. Please let them see, Lord. Show them what the vision is. Show them that we got this thing in the back. And said he went back out and took a look. And the host of the armies of God was surrounding the other army. Um, that's it. And he got excited then. See, they took that, they excited. And he came back and said, Master, uh -huh. there are more with us than there are against us. Uh -huh. that's it. Men of God realize that no matter what the numbers are, uh -huh. there's more with us uh -huh. than there are against us. Uh -huh. Men of God know that the weapons uh -huh. are sufficient. Uh -huh. Because the word tells us the weapons of our warfare uh -huh. are not calm. Uh -huh. But mighty through God. Mighty. Uh -huh. To the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. And every high thing that exalts itself. Yeah. Above yeah. the knowledge of God. Yeah. Our weapons are able right. to bring imaginations uh -huh. into subjection. Yeah. You, you know, we can imagine a lot of stuff. Yeah. You. Yeah. you get out there in the midst of something, things go wrong. We imagine yeah. anything. Yeah. But I'm telling you today that the weapons of God are. Sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. They're well known. Yeah. Eleazar knew that his weapon came from God. Uh -huh. And it would suffice. Yes, yes, yes. And then according to that, in his weapon, uh -huh. he had confidence. Yeah, yeah. Mm, you ever had confidence in something? Yeah. Uh -huh. man, man. Confidence in his weapon. Why? Because he knew it. Uh -huh. He had used it. Yeah. He'd been in battle before with it. Yeah. People tell me, they say, you don't, you don't go into battle or you don't go into a dangerous separation situation without an untried weapon. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't go there with something you just bought. Yeah. You got to know you shot it. You got to know it works. Yeah. You got to know it don't jam, it don't claw. Yeah. You got to know that when the animal charges, you can drop him where he stands. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the men of God. With the weapons of God. Yeah. Eliezer wasn't no novice. He wasn't no kid. He, he knew his weapon. Uh -huh. He knew how to use it. Yeah. He practiced it. Yeah. On a daily basis. Uh -huh. Second Timothy tells us what? Study. Well, to show thyself approved yeah. unto God. Yeah. A workman that needed not be ashamed. How do you prove? your weapon today? Did you prove it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then came back on Sunday? Knowing you had confidence in the weapon. Knowing that no matter what happens, it ain't going to fail. Realizing the scripture said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. He knew what he was doing with that weapon. He was able to use it. Yeah. And he could use it with confidence. Yeah. Yeah. You know David, and I'm staying on David because uh -huh. that's where you came from, Bishop. Uh -huh. and when he went out to the camp of Saul, uh -huh. he saw what was going on. Yeah. He said, y'all going to let him stand? He didn't do that. Uh -huh. And they went to tell him, well, you know, he's this big and he's that wide and yeah. he got a sword out there. Uh -huh. And David said, if you let me, I'll take him. Confidence in his way. He said, I killed the bear. And I slew a lion. And I know God will deliver me. So Saul, Saul took his arm. He said, here, David, put this arm on. David wasn't nothing but a boy. He had that big armor hung on him. He gave him that big sword. He probably couldn't even pick it up. Unproven. No confidence. Yeah. Not trustworthy. See, the enemy will try to give you some armor yeah. that you ain't used to. Yeah. He'll do this. Yeah. He'll take that. Yeah. He'll pick this up and use that. Yeah. You don't know if it works or not. Yeah. Think about where it came from. 
the word of God and say he's a liar. Oh. And he's the father of that thing. Oh, yes. He gave you some throat out. Uh -huh. It don't work. Uh -huh. But David said, here, let me take this stuff off. Yes. Now, I, I got a weapon that's proven here. Yes. And I got a couple of smooth stones in it. Yes. I'm going to take this rascal out your way. Yes. Now, the Azer had a proven weapon. Uh -huh. He was ready to go into battle because he knew. That God would take him out. Oh, yeah. That God would bring him through. Oh, yeah. We know that God is able. Yes, yes, yes. And we have to do like Job said, even if he slay me, yet will I serve him. But listen, we, we, we see here that he was able to deliver. And you have to have the experience. Of truth for yourself. Yes, you, do. you ain't gonna know if your weapon works or not yeah. until you try. Oh, right. Some folks walk around with a weapon that's in their seat all day. <laughs> like I said, when they leave here today, they go home, go home and put it on the dress. <laughs> they gonna put it back in the scabbard. They, they don't use it. Uh -huh. Does it work? I don't know. <laughs> and when they get in, in a problem, Bishop, they call you. <laughs> I'm gonna call the bishop. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call the bishop, but, but the word of God says you can do it. If you get in your word, you can do it. If you take the weapons of God, and if you're a man of God. I think it said in the Old Testament that when they were building the wall with Nehemiah, said everyone stood in his own place. And God said, quite ye, quite ye like me. Men don't run. Men don't duck. Men don't hide. Uh -huh. They're ready for the battle and they're ready because they have confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Tried and true. Yeah. Trusted. Uh -huh. And when you get that trust for yourself, when you have that confidence, not in you. Uh -huh. I don't have no confidence to do this word by myself. I, I don't have no confidence to pastor God's people by myself. I have no confidence uh -huh. in self. Uh -huh. Because the word said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes. But I know that the word said that he that has begun a good work in you yes. is able to keep you yes. until that day. Yes. Huh? He's able to keep you from falling. Yes. 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 I know we're still singing the song when we fall down, but we get up. No, no. God said he's able yes. to keep you. You ain't got to fall. He's able. Yeah. My God, my God. But you got to, you got to pull out your weapon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to pull that weapon out. Yeah. You got to get that word down on the inside. Yeah. David said, that word have I hid. Yeah. It's my heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Confidence comes from that. Yeah. Yeah. Eleazar had that. Uh -huh. His weapon was sufficient. Uh -huh. I like that today. Uh -huh. The situation seemed hopeless. Uh -huh. Listen, they came there with men. Uh -huh. And it says all the men was going away. What happened? Hey. Where did they go? Hey. Hey. <laughs> you know, here we are, the, the Philistines hey. over here. Where did they go? Yeah. Huh? Uh -huh. Come on, Pastor. That's good teaching. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, Bishop, and I know you ministers know. The people tell you all the time, I'm with you. Yeah. I got your back. Come on. Don't you blink. Yeah. Don't you blink. You better have the word. You better have a sword, don't believe. Come on, tell Cause they'll be gone so quick. Yeah. And you'll be all alone except you have the sword of the spirit. That you have the word of God. He, he was confident. He knew that sword was sufficient. He knew that it was able to do what he had to do. Oh, Even man. though the situation looked hopeless. The devil likes that. He likes to take you to the point where... You feel like there ain't no way out. Uh -huh. right? You know what happens. Uh -huh. you, you ought to just curse God and die. Uh -huh. yeah. you, you know he will do that. Yeah. And I'm telling you, yeah. it's flesh and blood. Uh -huh. I didn't realize that the scripture can come alive uh -huh. God, within God. you. Uh -huh. The scripture came alive. I read it a lot. I studied it a lot. I put it in my spirit so I thought. But when they stretch me out on that cold metal table 
and wheeled me between them operating room doors. See, my wife held my hand up into the operating room. And then she couldn't go no further. They put me in there. And I'm looking around the room huh, without no hope here. What, what, what's going on? As if it wasn't bad enough, I, I'm saved. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And the doctor came in and he said, you don't mind if I put on some music, do you? I said, no, but that's going to help you, no. And he pulled out a tape and stuck in the Santana, black magic woman. I said, Lord, help me. Oh, please. You said you never leave me nor forsake me. I'm in the midst of demons in here. And this man got a knife. I need something. I got confidence in I got to have confidence in the word. What, what nothing else there. That's it. The word of God. But he was able. And I knew he was able. Even though the situation seemed hopeless. Who is this guy? Where do we come from? I don't know. Is a good surgeon or bad surgeon? I don't know. But when it's the man of God, and you've got the weapon of God, Satan can try to take you out. But God will keep you in. God will keep you in. you got to have confidence. I know it seems like ain't nobody with you. I know it seems like you're all by yourself. And you're weak. Because you've been praying for folks. You've been laying hands on them. They've been calling you 24-7. you got a family. Wife, kids. A household to run. Lord, it's only me. It's only me. But a man of God. With the weapons of God. Can do like they said in the Old Testament. As for me and my house. That's right. We're going to serve the Lord. I don't care what comes. I don't care what the world is doing. I don't care what it looks like. I, I know it seems hopeless. But God is able. And so it says that Eliezer rose. Everybody else ran. And he rose. And it said he smote the Philistine. And he smote them down to the last man. And he even said that when the people that were with them finally came back, uh -huh. must have been the sound of battle stop. Uh -huh. Must have been all of a sudden they didn't hear no clinging and clanging, so they want to come see what happened. Uh -huh. you, you know, whatever, even us, when, they're, when there's shooting going on, uh -huh. they will hide. But as soon as the shooting stop, uh -huh. we're going to run right down there. Uh -huh. What happened? Uh -huh. <laughs> But it said he swung that sword so hard, it cleaved to his hand. It was stuck. He couldn't get rid of it. He couldn't move his hand because his hand was stuck to it. I don't know if you've ever been working with a tool or had something in your hand and you've been working so hard and pressing so hard, you, you try to put it down and it's stuck. But I want you to know what happened. He was clinging and cleaving to the word. You got to cleave to the word. You got to hold on to the word so hard you can't get it out your hands and you got to pry your fingers loose. He was swinging it in the midst of unsurmountable odds. He was swinging it. And he kept swinging it until he got weary, Bishop. Say he was tired. But he kept on swinging. I don't know, he could have been like the Energizer Bunny. He took a lick in him. He didn't stop, he just keeps going. God will give you the energy. I don't know how you do it. I, I don't know what it takes for you to run out of energy, but God said. If you hold on a while, I'll make your enemies your footstool. Just hold on. You don't have to do nothing. Just hold on. You're a man of God. With the weapons of God in your hand. Yeah. And he'll use you. Yes, he will. Yeah. Now, I just want you to know another thing. Uh -huh. he, was, he, was, he was pursuing. Uh -huh. Everybody else was running. Uh -huh. He was pursuing. They didn't have to come looking for him. He went after them. Uh -huh. See, I know they tell you today. Pastor Lauren, he who fights and runs away. Lives to fight another day. Uh 
not Eliezer. So where are you at? Let me have him. He waded right into it. Come on. If you want a piece of this, you can have it. So he was pursuing. And while he was pursuing, he was wielding the word of God. Uh, you, you can chase people with the word. People will run from you when you wield the word. People will hide out. Where you at? I know you're in there. I'm bringing you the word today. You can try to hide if you want to. But see, I know what it's here. It said it pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent. I don't know what you're thinking. But God knows. And he got a sword that will pierce right through what you're doing. Huh? So he'll cleanse it by the blueness of the wound. Come on. He ain't afraid to cut you. Right? I know some folks got a knife. They ain't afraid to cut you. God got a soul. And sometimes he got to cut something off you. To convince you that he's sufficient. I'm the men of God. With the weapon of God. And sisters, I want you to know I ain't leaving you out today. Because it's included in that. Yes. That man has a species. Yes. Male and female. Yes. Yes. You got the same power. Yes. Yes. If you have the confidence and the understanding. Yes. Yes. I don't know if they do it now, but Elder Stewart will, will bear me up. Uh -huh. Said when they when you went into service in the army or the Marine Corps, they gave you a weapon. Uh -huh. That was your weapon. Uh -huh. You cleaned it, you replaced it, you took it apart, you put it back together, and they finally got to the point where they made you do it blindfold. Yes, yes, yes. Don't leave nothing now. Is this yours? No, I ain't mine. Okay, go try to shoot it then. And you got to know this weapon inside out. Frontwards, backwards, sideways. Some of the weapons of God in the hands of God's man. God will bless you. But you can't be a novice. That's what God said. You, you can't be no beginner. You, know, you want to be like the seven sons of Sceva? Anybody know who they are? So they, they saw the apostles casting out demons. They said, oh, I can do that. I know what he said. In the name of Jesus. Him and his brothers got together. Well, seven of them, we ain't scared of y'all. So they went down and found the man possessed. And went to talking to him in the name of Jesus. And he, so he looked at him. He said, Jesus I know. And then Paul I know. But who in the world is you? Where you come from? See, if you ain't in your word, if you ain't got the sword of the spirit, if you ain't rooted and grounded, if you don't know how to wield that thing, don't you go messing with nobody. Now, you better off calling the bishop. Don't you go out there. And then, Bishop, I'm sorry, but I tell some folks now, you know, if you don't want out there and stir something up, don't call me. You called it out, you get rid of it. I didn't send you down there. I didn't tell you to go down there and, and cast out demons. You called it, I'll see you later. That's what they did to the seven sons of Stephen. They, they beat them naked in the street. And they went running, bloody and naked. And I guarantee you they didn't try that no more. But I want you to know that the men of God, with the weapons of God, it says that after Eleazar waded into him, and he began to sling that sword, and there was nobody left. And look what it says. It says that the Lord... The Lord, the, Lord. the Lord, rock of victory. Yes. That day, you ain't doing it by yourself. Right. God will make it happen. Yes. And he'll make you be able to step back and say, God did it. Yes. Yes. I didn't do it. Yes. God brought me out. I got a testimony. Yes. Yes. Like the blind man, I'm wrapping up, y'all. I'm, I'm wrapping up, but he said he was blind from birth. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. And he happened to be in the streets when Jesus came through. And Jesus healed him. Never saw him. He didn't see Jesus one time. All he knows somebody put their hands on him and he could see. And the Pharisees called him up to the synagogue and they said, Look, who heals you? He said, I don't know. I, I got no clue. I was blind. 
So he said, we got to do something about this because, you know, Jesus is out there. And he's doing stuff. We can't let him get credit. So he called his parents in. He said, I want you to tell everybody this boy ain't never been blind. He always was able to see. His mother and father was kind of scared, so they, they did it. But it said the blind man went back out of the city hall. And he went up the street and somebody said, look, there's Jesus. That's who healed you. And they had already told him, don't you go out there talking about Jesus. So don't you go out there telling people Jesus healed you. Because if you do, we're going to beat you. We might even kill you. But it said as soon as he found out, he went straight back. And said, look here. I know who did it now. Jesus healed me. There was a man of God at that point with the weapons of God. And he wasn't afraid. Of nothing. Huh? Uh -huh. You know what they say? Well, Frank, you said he's a yes, sir. triple kill a brick. you will trip a cripple stick and he'll drown a drop of water. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Frank no. <laughs> y'all don't do it no. He's a bad man. Because he had the weapon that God gave him. Now I just want to tell you today as men of God. We're bad men. Yeah. When you got that weapon in your hand, uh -huh. you're a bad man. You're a bad woman. Oh, yeah. Nothing can withstand you. Oh, yeah. It's already been said a thousand. Uh -huh. One person can do. Uh -huh. And two can do ten times. Yeah. And on the vein of unity, how many? Uh -huh. Look who's in this room today. Uh -huh. Look who's in this room today. Uh -huh. Men of God. Not just some baby's daddy. I, I, I hate that term. Yes, yes. stand that. Yes, oh. yes, My baby daddy. Yes, yes. 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 Man of God. He's a man. He's, he's a husband. He's a father. He's a brother. Yes. He's a man of God. Yes. And he's proficient uh -huh. in the word of God. Oh, yes. I want to tell you today that you, you, you can hear what I'm saying today. And it might move you to some degree. But until you as a man of God take up the weapons of God and prove them, it ain't going to be nothing but a thing. You're not going to prove whether it's true or not. And there's going to always be just a little doubt. Does this really work? See, because that's, that's, what, that's what the devil uses. He uses doubt. He wants to make you not believe the authority of God's word. You know what he asked you? He said, well, you won't surely die. No, you, you, you think God stood there flat-footed and told her, you will die. That's what he do. I said, well, it ain't going to harm you. Look, just, just, just take a little bit. You know, that's good for you. It's natural. They grow it out the earth. You know, you know they got medical me medical marijuana now, y'all. It's natural. Man of God don't need it. Man of God got a high that you can't get from that. Man of God has got something that'll keep you in the midst of what you're going through. But you'll never know. You'll never know if you don't try. The apostle wouldn't have known he could walk on water. If he hadn't stepped out the boat. The scripture said we walk by faith. And not by sight. And we can say that all day long. Until we apply our faith to something. Now I'm talking to pastors and ministers. And I know y'all know where I'm coming from. I know you've had the experience. I know that you had to try your weapons. Huh? To see whether or not they were of God and to see whether or not they work. But I'm telling you today, in this meeting here, in this gathering, when we're talking about men being men, uh -huh. yes. we have to know how to use the weapons yes, yes, of God. Yes. And not only do we have to use them, but we have to train our young men. Yes, yes. And they have no examples yes. to follow. Yes. Following after drug yes. man. Uh -huh. following after pimps, but God yes. said they need a manly example. Uh -huh. How to be a man. Yeah. How to act like a man. Uh -huh. yeah. How to walk like a man. Yeah. Yeah. Men don't wear their pants on the ground. No. Yeah. 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 That's right. I'm, I'm very particular about who see my underwear. Men don't dress. Uh -huh. there's, there's, there's a dress code. Yes. Yeah. Everything's done decent. 
So today, I want to leave with you that. Do you have the weapons of God? And not only do you have them, but do you know how to use them? Men of God, without the weapon of God, are in effect. And it takes us to use that weapon together. Yes. Now, I want you to notice what it said. It said that David and Eliezer stood back to back. Uh -huh. Men of God standing back to back uh, yes, yes. undefeated. Yes. Yes. Some of the greatest yes. soldiers. Yes. I'm stopping y'all. I'm stopping. Yes. I'm, stopping. Yes. I'm, stopping. Yes. I'm stopping. I'm stopping. Yes. The Spartans, y'all seen it. Some of y'all seen the movies. Yes. Yes. I've been a history buff all my life through school. And mm -hmm. I read about the Spartans. And I went through the things that they went through. And they said they stood shoulder to shoulder. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Each man protected the other man. Yes. Yes. His shield defended the other man. Yeah. His shield defended this man. And they marched as a youth. They knew their weapons. They were trained from children how to use those weapons. One Spartan was worth 20 or 30 of the other men because they knew their weapons. I just want you to know that that's where God wants us. Yes, yeah, man. Unified, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, Amen. Yes. Amen. Back to back. Yes. Yes. And God yes. will use you. Yes, it will. If you know how to use the way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Study. Study. Get educated. Uh -huh. yeah, man. Don't leave before it's your time. Don't, that's right, don't just man. jump up and run out and do something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm close enough because everybody's seen a bunch of bananas. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So God put you there to learn something. God put you in a position under the bishop to, to be trained and to be raised up. Yes, when yes, it's say that, you, say that. Yeah. You'll know you're ready. Yeah. Bad. But them bananas, hey, we're always in a hurry. Uh -huh. But which one of them bananas gets eaten? Mm. Mm. The first one out of the box. Look my God, God, my God. The rest of them fine. They still together. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They pull you out that clutch. You go. Uh -huh, Watch out. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you about to get that? <laughs> so men of God, use the weapons of God, yes. but know how to use them. Oh, yes. Be aware that whatever you meet out, uh -huh. it's going to be meted back to you. Yes. Whatever you judge, you're going to be judged the same way. Yes. Uh -huh. So we have to use them skills Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Let's give God some praise for that word. Oh, we can do better than that. Let's give God some real praise up in here. There is no surprise that many of us and many of the ministries that I'm connected with was birthed from loving from Peace of God Outreach Ministries. I'm the pastor, I'm the bishop, I am the leader I am today because of this man and this woman of God. Let's give God some praise. Don't get it twisted and missed it. Amen? Amen? Let's just be real about it. I sat up under them for three years to receive the training that I had. If you look at the name of our ministry, Loving Arms Outreach Ministries, the apple don't fall far from the tree. Amen? Amen. There's a lot of things that I go back to. We did a, a couples conference, and I was going through my notes, and I found a book that Pastor Patricia wrote, had a little green cover to it, about having relationships, and I insisted that that be included in what we do. A lot of the things that we do around here is just not reinvented. It's just copy because it works. Amen? Amen. It allows people and things to grow. Amen? We're connected. We're family. And it was a long time ago that Pastor, uh, that Dr. Virginia Ford said, you know, you, you've been gone from peace of God for a while and, 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 and you haven't had Pastor Gary here to speak yet. And I looked at Elder and I said, you know, God has a timing for everything. And when the timing is right, 
we will go ahead and extend that invitation. And it's one thing I learned from Pastor Gary. You can move when you want to move. That's cool. But when you move in the spirit, it's done right. Today was the day that Pastor Gary was supposed to be here. Not before, not after, because nobody can close it the way he just closed it. Come on, somebody. The weapons of God. Many times. Schedules conflict. But that's alright. Because it was God's timing. It wasn't our timing. It was God's timing. And we always knew that. And there's another thing that, 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 that you want to know. That, that what I miss about Peace of God Outreach Ministries the most is the fellowship that I had with Pastor Gary. That one-on-one -on -one time when we would go out and share a sub sandwich together and have a soda together. But the one thing that he instilled in me is that I find myself doing that with my pastors and my ministers now. That I can go and have that one-on-one -on -one time with them. And I can, why? Because it was ingrained and implanted in me. Amen? Amen? Amen. So don't. So a lot of the things that I do when I do it, you guys, you ain't gotta go far. Just look over at Pastor Gary and Pastor Patricia and see what they doing over there. And if they doing more than likely, we're doing it at some time or another. Amen. Let's give God some praise. We were truly, truly blessed. Even down to our men's and women's fellowship. What I am going to do now is I, Elder Lucy, are we ready for the children? I'm going to dismiss all the children and go let them be fed. All right. Amen. 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 We will go ahead and pray over. Where is my, where is Nini? Nini, where you at? She's out there already. Nini is our youth leader right now. Nini will pray over the food with the children. Amen. 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 As pastor students, we feed the children first because once we get all done with our preliminaries and we get back out there, then they come in here and they have a little children church. Amen. Right. We have our young people practicing on being ministers and leaders in the gospel. Amen. 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 Dr. Baskin, you blessed us this morning. Amen. All the way from Memphis, Tennessee. That's what I'm talking about, love. Let me tell you about this man and woman of God. The woman of God was here, and we prayed for her, and she felt healing and restoration in her body. She drove all the way back to Memphis, Tennessee, picked up her husband, and drove all the way back during the women's conference. Come on, somebody. That's love. And then came back with an offering. I would rather her bring back one of those cakes they've been talking about in their restaurant down there. But money will do too. Amen. But doctor, you blessed us. And I just want to just bless you just a little bit. You come up here for a second. From the Loving Arms Outreach Ministries, a, uh, a certificate of appreciation presented to Reverend Dr. Earl Baskin, Jr. Loving Arms Outreach Ministries was blessed to have you participate in our second annual Sons of David Men's Fellowship Week in 2013. We appreciate you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Signed by myself with my new bishop seal that they gave me. <laughs> God bless you, man of God. Amen. We appreciate that word. Amen. You guys will be able to see that word running on GMAP number one.com. It's up running now, right? I know we're doing a whole up by Wednesday. Amen. 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 I know Elder Lucy is out there serving the children, so I'm going to do this for her, Pastor Gary. Elder Lucy presented this to you during one of your other events. And then during something happened to it and it was damaged but Elder Lucy worked from this for two days straight to restore it back to its original condition we just want to say that we love you
Yeah, we don't trust you with your armor bearer. <laughs> Pastor Gary, to you. And we would like to present you with a certificate, just like we gave Pastor Dr. Baskin. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. We're learning. At this time, as the children are going ahead, I'm going to ask Pastor Patricia to come up and to give a few words of impartation, a few words of exhortation. And again, I want to thank you for all the men and women of God. This has been a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal weekend. Amen. From Friday night with my good friend Pastor Josh kicking us off. We got two sermons for the price of one. Because God gave him a word and he had a word that he wanted to give. So Pastor Josh with his little with his little came up here, split up the sermon, and gave us two for the price of one. Then on Saturday morning, oh my God. Pastor Gary, let me say this. I've seen Elder Rogers go from being a Sunday school director to studying the Bible to reading the word to being an elder but he was never confident in his preaching he always would say well I, I, I don't know what to say he would try to fumble through his notes and all that Saturday morning the Holy Spirit took over and Elder Rogers got off yeah. service down in Decatur that I don't feel like driving to. <laughs> Ask Pastor Kevin about that. We, amen. We installed Pastor Kevin as pastor at the end of July and the month of August. All the speaking engagements that I had, I turned them over to him. And he was gone all month long, but we're glad to have our pastor back at home. Amen. And he's online every morning at 7 a.m. with Pastor Patricia six. at 6 a.m. Oh, that's why I miss y'all all the time, huh? <laughs> at 6 a.m. with Pastor Patricia on the prayer line. But then on Saturday afternoon, Pastor Kevin, no, Saturday morning after Elder Rogers, Pastor Kevin preached. And man, did he preach a word. He preached a word. And then, last night, Prophet John Villa. Oh my God, he gave a corporate word, individual words, he gave a word for kingdom, and I tell you what, whoever was here last night, you will never be the same. And as a request to the prophet, all those that he prophesied to, uh, your DVD, a copy of your prophetic word that he gave to you, that portion of it is being recorded, and he requested that you receive that. Amen? And they're editing that and getting that ready right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, and they put you all over Facebook. You just posted up there. She got her blessing last night. Amen. Look at it. She, she don't even look the same now. <laughs> Amen. And then this morning, then this morning, all oh, this morning, oh, Pastor Baskins just took us on a ride. And for those of you, I'm telling you, he just went straight old school Memphis, Tennessee on us. And you know what? I, I sat back there and said, I, I'm a pretty good preacher, but Elder Rogers had me up in my office and said, now that's how to hoop. I don't know what you've been doing, and that stuff you get from New Jersey, that ain't hooping. What you saw here today, that was a hoop. And you better get right before you go down to Memphis with that New Jersey stuff. So I got the DVD. I'm going to have to copy you a little bit, but I'm going to learn my yeah. I told the apple don't fall far from the tree. I'm just like Pastor Patricia. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And then tonight, the weapons of God used by the man of God, by our very own Pastor Gary. Peace of God.
What a word. None of us here should leave this place ever the same. We know that we have to pip, pick up our weapons. And we have to read them and be in them daily. But just don't read them. Just don't be in them. Let them. If people can see the weapon in you, there's a whole nother ball game. A whole nother ball game. Can we rest on our feet? As I bring up Pastor Patricia, so that Pastor Patricia can come up and give us our closing remarks, our closing words, bless the food for the adults. And then I'm going to ask everyone to just wait for a few minutes until we get Pastor Baskins and his wife and Pastor Patricia and Pastor Gary out to a table and seated, and then we can all come on out. Amen. Have the armor bearers go ahead and fix them plates and, and get them ready to go. But I just want to thank God for each and every single one of you. But let's give God some praise for Pastor Patricia. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord in the house. Lord. Come on, I don't hear you up in here. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got to have the same praise to go out of here that you came in here with. Amen. Because the battle ain't in here, it's outside. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I guarantee you, I won't be before you long. Amen. I just got out of the pulpit myself in the last hour or so. Just enough to shift the, uh, to uh, put on something else to get over here. But we had church on today. Amen, church. Taught in the Bible. I certainly want to stop right now and give honor to whom honor is due. I'm definitely I am a protocol person. Amen. And I certainly want to honor, as I pastor say, the angel of this house, none other than Bishop uh, Michael L. Hargett. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Amen. You got to do that until he died. Amen, church. Praise the Lord, and I certainly thank God, amen, for one of my daughters in the spirit as well. She's a first lady now, and you look good. Amen. Praise the Lord. None other than first lady Cheryl Hargett. Amen. Praise. Aren't they beautiful people? Amen. Young people. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was young like that starting out. Amen. Preaching the word of God. And I tell you, I won't, I won't give nothing, no a place to the devil. I thank God that I heard the call of God. Amen. In an early age. Amen. And went out and be so y'all got it easy in this dispensation because I was a woman at that time, but I had to go and fight. Amen. And I, I'm a mighty woman of God. I had to just stand up and do it, but I honor God on today. I certainly want to thank God for my own pastor, Dr. Gary Stern. Amen. And I was listening to you, Bishop, when you were sharing about the man and woman of God that went all the way to Memphis. If, if, am I not mistaken if that's where you're from? Right here, praise the Lord. Amen. From Memphis. And I was just sharing with Elder Ford and everything. I said, I don't know why. Maybe my husband don't remember that. Don't remember. It's been two years, but I remember very well. I went all the way down to give him a kidney two years ago. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't happy for me, but I'm happy anyway. If he had called him, amen, a few years back, he wouldn't have been able to do this. Because the enemy was on him real heavy. Amen. Dialysis every four hours. I mean, every other day, four hours a day. Come on, somebody. I've been married to him. It would be 38 years. I saw him at his last. Amen. And when I watch the man of God preach now, I thank God because this man has been my pastor for, for uh, how many years we've been in the peace of God? 15 years. Years. Actually, it'll be next week, uh, September the 1st. He's been preaching to me that long, let alone being my teacher. And if you've been up on administration that long, you ought to know something. Because as you see, he can whip that word when it comes to the history. Praise the Lord. I, I, I tell you, thank God I'm an evangelist in my own because, amen, you could just say it and keep going. Amen, church. Praise the Lord. But I do want to honor God on today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I certainly thank God for Elder Dr. Virginia Ford that's in the house and she's some by this woman. Amen. 
She's God's woman. Amen. I certainly want to thank God for my own son. Amen. Uh, uh, Pastor Doctor. Amen. Laron Funches. We were just talking and said, I wonder will my son be here on today. And we walked up together. If you if you if you're a good person, somebody'll follow you. Come on, somebody. Somebody'll follow you. Praise the Lord. I thank God for my very own. Amen. Praise the Lord. We came up together. And I haven't seen you in a long time, but I thank God for you, Pastor Jerry Stewart. Amen? And I certainly want to congratulate you. I saw it on Facebook, but it's nothing like seeing it in person. And I thank God that the Lord, I pray that the Lord has given you the desires of your heart. God bless you and congratulations to you. Amen. Come on, peace of God. Let's give them a see if you had invited us, we might have would have brought a kill. Amen. Praise the Lord. But it's the Amen. Praise the Lord. May you all be blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know the two here, but I uh Man and woman of God, God bless you all. Is my prayer. I've heard nothing but good things about you because this is a good house. Amen? Amen. To the woman of God here, and we already know that you're beautiful in your own way. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Beautiful in your own way. And I certainly want everybody to know that Pastor Strada, amen, praise the Lord, every morning. Amen. From Monday through Friday, we are on the prayer line together. Amen. What an awesome, amen. I never had met him until I was at, uh, uh, I had to speak at North Chicago Community Days. And I met him, but I already knew him in the spirit. Amen. And I thank God, and I met your lovely wife. Amen. God bless you all. He loves you. You don't know that. He talks about you all the time. Amen. And I thank God for that. I want to thank, amen. I want to say hello did he leave out the house to uh elder uh, uh frank rogers amen we're family amen church yeah. to elder frank rogers amen to pastor dr david bolton where is he amen god bless you man of god we know these people amen church we grew up together is it anybody else and i certainly want to thank god for my own ministry peace of god outreach ministry family prayed us through. Amen. They prayed until God answered the prayer. Amen. Come on somebody. These some praying people up in here. Amen. They prayed us all the way to the operating room. Come on somebody. They prayed for us. And I tell people now, you got to appreciate your ministry. Come on somebody because they love us. Amen. They, they drop their water pot and I can tell that some of them haven't had a chance to eat. Amen. Because we did have an awesome service on today. Amen. And I've been, I've been on a run now. I haven't had an opportunity to have a weekend I think in about two months. Amen. I've been preaching. I've been out of town with the youth. I came back and Dr. Gary Stern and I were in church all this week to pastor a pastor Richard Daniel Hinton who is our cover and he turned 80 years old and I was there on, th on Thursday night. It was supposed to have been Bishop Noah Jones and I'm asking that you all pray for him. The man of God is sick in his back and when you preach a lot and when you do a lot, the physical body can get down very quick. Come on somebody. The physical body, you know how much he preached and how well known he is to the nation. But I tell you, there was a man in that house on Friday, on Thursday night. Pastor Mark Hinton, I tell you, my amen is turned upside down. Amen? You know it don't take much at my, I'm just telling you where I go to have church at. Come on, somebody. And we were there on Thursday night, and then on Friday night, it was none other than the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop Charles Blake. And y'all know he's somebody's preacher. And I thank God I just been on a spiritual high. Praise the Lord. I thank God for in this time and we need the Savior. In this time and we need to be fed even more in this season than what we were fed in the past. Because you know why the devil is still a big devil. But we serve an awesome God. Come on somebody. Praise the Lord. I honor God for all of you all and my dear friends. Amen. Elder Lucy 
and um, her husband. God bless you all. I just love you all. Praise the Lord. Because that's one of the main things that I talk about all the time. And one of the things I do almost every service that we have is that we fellowship. Amen. I know how to, I know how to give some time up in here. Amen, church. God bless you, Pastor Elder and Pastor Bishop Michael Hargett. All of them he got. Amen. And praise the Lord. Doctor. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just love to see the people of God. Amen. Go forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. It ain't no room for jealousy because God has every last one of us with our own anointing and our own style. I'm not trying to mimic nobody because I'm going to mess up trying to be like somebody else. All I want to be is how like Jesus want me to be. Come on somebody. Amen. How Jesus want me to be. And I, I know that I'm a radical person. Come on. I, I told somebody, uh, I, I just realized Elder Stood, Pastor Stood, that uh, about a couple of months ago, I just realized that I was, uh, I didn't know that because back in 1946 when I was born, they didn't know that then. I, I, I didn't realize that I was a HD, what you call it? ADHD in the spirit. I ain't an ADHD in the natural, but in the spirit of God, I'm radical. Come on, somebody. I'll tell them some stuff. I'll tell them the devil. And I want to be like that. I got HDHD in my blood. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It don't take long for my weapon to stir up because I've been trained by the best. I've been trained. slap your face. But go in there with the power of the, the name of Jesus and say the demons have to tremble when you call on the name of Jesus. I thank God that even today a Bishop Hargett, amen, Mother Betty Davis is here and she's been fighting cancer but look how good she looks. I told her today, we prayed her out of that hospital. We prayed that she shall live and not die. Wasn't it somebody, wasn't it you that say you were a surviving cancer patient? Look, you can be a, pardon me? And, and if you don't tell you've been healed, God might just let you go back to that state. Come on, somebody. And you've been healed by the power of God. And I thank God out of the two years that I gave that kidney, my people can tell you I've never been sick. Matter of fact, I speed it up. I must be the need the kidney. Come on, somebody. I told him he got the fat kidney, and I finally lost some weight. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He got the kidney that make him fat, and I got the kidney that got me smaller. Come on. I, oh, my God. Amen. Just let me know when the time is up. I thank you, Bishop Hargett. I thank God for this beautiful edifice that we're in. We will feel the power of God in here. You're doing a wonderful work. Amen. Come on, let's give a man of God a good God. God bless you. Everybody wants to let you know. And when you visit somebody's house, you're supposed to encourage them and exalt them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because that ain't about you. It's all about what the work of the Lord is doing. And I thank God that we broke that yoke today. Come on, somebody. The yoke was broken on today. I thank God for the people of God being obedient. Amen. Because curiosity killed the cat. Now you know how it look and now you know what they do so you ain't got to wonder no more. And I'm talking up in here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you've never been nowhere before and, you, and one of your sisters and brothers go out into the field and into the vineyard and, and, and the, you know, the enemy automatically come and say things to you in your spirit and you got to rebuke it and then you hear other people say things. That's what I talked about today. You got to tell uh, Why my telephone? Praise the Lord. Somebody let me hold a cell phone right quickly. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. It's in here. Let me get my own cell phone. Praise the Lord. And, and the enemy, amen, will come to you with all kind of crazy stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All kind of the, of the devilish stuff and, and all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you something that I learned. Amen. Praise the Lord in the spirit. Of, it's up in here. It, it, it will say, come on, my, come on out of here, phone. Praise the Lord. You up in here. I'm paying this money on you. Come forth in the name of Jesus. Because that's a bill that we have acquired that we don't even need. Come on, somebody. That phone, keeping up with a phone is like keeping up with a baby. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever lost their phone and you got to tell somebody to call you and call it so I can find it? Sometimes. 
time to phone up under the bed. It's between the car. Come on, somebody. You don't know where the phone is, but yet it's still you got a bill. I just want to let you know this one little thing right here that is called a cell phone. I'm telling you, if you don't be careful with this thing, this phone will cause you to go to hell. Come on, somebody. Because you're talking on the phone to the wrong person. You're talking about people on this phone. Come on, somebody. I, I heard last week at Bishop J. Drew Shield Church that the man of God said, some of you all better go into your context and, and contents and delete some of these people out of your phone. Because they don't mean you no good. Some people call me, I look at it, I can already smell hell. I can already smell that they ain't going to talk the right stuff. I can already you all again and again and again because I guarantee you somebody that the myth that the went over their ear. So look at your neighbor and say, see you done already missed it. Already missed it. Because if this phone could talk, if your phone could talk, it'll say leave me alone. I'm tired of the gossip on this phone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you all again and again. And like I said, I thank you for the invite. Amen. And I believe in this in my heart. When someone invites you to your house, I've been in ministry a long time. And when you keep inviting somebody to come to your house and they don't never invite you to come to their house. Yeah. Guess what? You put them. You you get rid of that. Amen. Because if you I feel this way, if you good enough to preach in in your house, then you good enough to preach in my house. Am I right, somebody? If you gonna if, if Pastor Gary is good enough to preach right here, you good enough to preach over there. Because the word is the word. The word of God even say the word come without repentance. A devil can get up here and preach because he know the word. It's a lot of it's a lot of devils in the pulpit. Come on, somebody. That's why they call Oh, yes, it is. I know what I'm talking about. Ain't I? I don't think nobody in here big enough to beat me. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I say what I want to say long as it's of God. And we need to hear that. We don't need to sugarcoat the word. Amen. We need to tell it like an ISLs because the devil, like I told him, he's nasty. Look at your neighbor and say the devil is nasty. He don't play fair. He nasty. But the people of God are righteous. Righteous and all together. Holy in the Lord. Keep your vessel. Keep your weapon. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sharpen your weapon. Just because you went to church all week, guess what? You got to give some God some time before you go to bed tonight. Amen. Amen, church. That don't justify because you was in church all week. Jesus was in church right now. Amen. You still got to honor God tonight and say, Lord, I just thank you. All the things that I heard this week, let me learn something. And don't think because you're a pastor, bishop, a prophetess, and a DDS, and a HSS, that you don't need the Lord and you won't fall down. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. My time is up. Amen. Do I get a check for this? No, and a certificate. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. We just got two for the price of one. We finished the way we started. Amen. Amen. Pastor Dr. Jerry Stewart, if we all will rest on our feet, will now come and give us the benediction and dismiss. That's okay. Pastor Stewart would do it. We receive, we received a lot from you. Dr. Ford, thank you so much for being here. Amen. 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 Pastor Stewart. Oh, okay, come on. Yeah. Yes. And I am going to be still. Amen. And do what thus say the Lord protocol. They 
make sure to do the benediction and the, and the uh, blessing of the food. That's what you do. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gathering that we had this weekend. All weekend long, God, the men of God have come to the house of God and the women of God have been, amen, as to help me to come in, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this house, for it is a blessed house. And we pray, oh God, that the anointing of God is sealed in this place. And no devil and no weapon can come against the things of God in this house. Thank you for Loving Arms Outreach Ministries, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for, oh God, again and again for Bishop Hargan and his lovely wife, oh God. Even for his children, oh God. We thank you for those that helped to put this service together all weekend. With labor in the background, ministries of helps have helped, oh God, to make this to be what it, what it is. We pray, oh God, for traveling mercies for everyone that is upon the sound of my voice. Those that have to go far and near the pastors and the, the woman of God and the men of God that is out of town Lord God we thank you for come, for them coming into the Lake County area oh God and pleading the blood of Jesus we need help you oh God in the name of Jesus bless them they're going out and they're coming in we thank you for the other part of the body of Christ Lord we are a family Lord God and families stick together in the name of Jesus let us walk oh God like men and women of God and, and, and let us oh God know that we love one another Lord God it's nothing but the enemy that try to keep us apart but God we thank you for the true fellowship of the men and the women of God and now God we pray oh God that you bless the food oh God bless the hands that prepared it oh God let it be good to us oh God let it nourish our bodies and we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say amen amen, amen and amen hug somebody next to you and tell them you're glad that you saw a man probably to touch one another. They don't do that like the women. Over the next couple of days, over the next couple of days, when you get an opportunity, look at Second Chronicles seven fourteen. You get an opportunity, look at Second Chronicles seven fourteen. At my people who are called by my name. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.